Hello again and welcome to another episode of the Franchise Everything Podcast where we talk about everything and anything franchising. And today we're coming from the live audience, live stream podcast from the Melbourne Franchising and Business Opportunities Expo, as you can hear all that humming away in the background. And I'm joined by Damien Boehm, who is the CEO and founder of Urban Clean. Damien, how are you going? Very good, thanks, Glenn. Good to meet you, mate. Good to see you again. Well, not meet you. Good to see you again. We've seen each other hundreds of times. Yeah. Mate, and we're going to talk today about your book, this one here, Clean Up With Franchising. That's a nice cover with you on it, mate. Yeah, I've been told that's the most hair that um, has ever been on me in a photograph. So there <laughs> or you on go. your face compared yeah. to you. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And, <laughs> and a little bit more there. But yeah, you grow a better beard yeah. than me for sure, yeah. without a doubt, mate. So, Clean Up With Franchising. So- to tell me a little bit about Urban Clean to start with, your, your business that you're the founder of. What, 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 what's Urban Clean? So Urban Clean is a commercial cleaning franchise. We clean offices, medical centres, uh, gyms, schools, anything that's commercial, we'll clean it. So just commercial, wh- why only commercial and not residential? Because I imagine that it's a m- we always need a cleaner at home, so why not residential? Uh, well, it's just the nature of what commercial cleaning is. So commercial cleaning is contractual. Uh, people will sign agreements, long-term agreements, one or two-year agreements, and sometimes uh, it's indefinite. Uh, so we wanted to have a contractual-based business. Like when I got into cleaning- Not a week-to-week week type of thing. Or, it, yeah, exactly. Or sometimes it's even daily cleans. And uh, the difference between sort of residential and commercial is residential is a discretionary spend. So- um, if you're doing well, if you're busy, you'll get a cleaner in. Uh, but uh, if you're a workplace, you need a cleaner. So it's not an option. Uh, and any office that's got over five staff will need to have a cleaner to come in regularly. That's, that's interesting. I never thought about like about, yeah, home cleaning is discretionary because you can actually do it yourself, even though you don't want to. Yeah. But yeah, commercial, no one at work is just going to start vacuuming, are they? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I can't see doctors doing that. They're no, not going to no, be taking out the so. trash at the end save, of the day. Save a few dollars, <laughs> yeah. not going to happen. <laughs> So, so what was the motivation to write the book? So let's talk about the book itself because I know you give a lot of tips and a lot of advice and all that sort of thing. What, what was the rationale and the inspiration for it? So the motivation for writing that book was uh, basically the same reason I changed my franchise recruitment journey when I first started franchising. When I first started franchising, uh, I did probably what every novice does and, and try and sell you know, the opportunity and say, you know, you can make great money, uh, you can be your own boss, uh, you know, m- my of, franchise is best, fees are, yeah, yeah. All, all that sort of stuff. And and I, the, I faced a credibility challenge, first of all, because I was a brand new franchise, like no, I had no other franchises. So yep. when people used to ask me, so can I speak to some other franchises when I started as well? There's no one to speak with. So you how did you t- handle that? Well, the, the way I handled it, uh, was I actually took them out on site to uh, sites we were cleaning. So because I, I couldn't get them to speak with other franchises, the only way I could actually demonstrate that we had a business to speak of was to show them the business that we already had. Yeah. Uh, but w- one of the breakthroughs we, we had is, uh, a- and it's actually thanks to Jim Penman because he wrote a book called Selling by Not Selling, Mm -hmm. is I realized that uh, I was trying to sell, but I wasn't trying to help people in their buying journey or actually understand the industry. So I had a breakthrough when I changed my tack from selling to educating. Mm -hmm. And so I I actually, when a prospect inquired, instead of telling them, hey, the franchise is this much, this is what you're going to get. All the features of it. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. I said, well, are you interested in learning how to run a successful commercial cleaning business? And of course, I'd say, yes, we'll come in and we'll have a chat and I'll tell you how I ran a successful commercial cleaning business and how you can do the same. And then I got engagement. So people actually were interested in learning how to run a commercial cleaning business. They weren't interested in Urban Clean. They weren't interested in my didn't, opportunity. You didn't have any cred or brand or anything. Yeah. So was the credibility in you as well? Were you feeling like you didn't have the credibility, like a belief almost to sell like that? Was that part of the issue? No, that wasn't an issue. Yeah. Like I knew it was a great opportunity. Okay. I knew you could make money you out of it. You to change the angle of the conversation. It, 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 exactly. And so um, the book is really an extension of, journey for me yep. where we made it made education an integral part of the recruitment journey so people learn how to run a commercial cleaning business and then i kind of got sick of saying the same thing over and over again so i wrote a book about it excellent you want to get it all out of your <laughs> yeah, head yeah. get it all out of your head as many do i want to get it down on paper yeah 
So w- what's your journey? What, what's before you weren't always in commercial cleaning? What did you do before that? Uh, so I, um, I have done cleaning before. And in fact, uh, when I'm, uh, I traveled overseas, uh, I was teaching uh, English, as a, English as, a, um, as a second language. Uh, what, that's, why, that, that? that's what happens when you study classics and you do ancient Greek and Latin. Is that what you studied, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's, oh, right, that's, that's pretty, right. That's pretty yeah. useful today. Depending no. on what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know where it's, well, maybe, you know, if you want to become a priest. So if I'm, I'm ever playing priest. Trivial Pursuit and I get a question like that, I know who to call. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so so I came back to Australia and um, got married, and I needed to make a living, and so I decided to start a cleaning business, handyman business, and uh, I got a book of business. I've got lots of uh, holiday homes I was cleaning. This is before Airbnb. Yep. Uh, and I promptly sold it as soon as I built it up within a few months and yeah. got into what I really wanted to get into, which was real estate. And uh, by real estate, I was, I was doing um, you know, town planning. I wanted to get into property development. Mm. And that's what I did for a number of years until all that went pear-shaped. And I had a look at cleaning how, again. How did it go pear shaped? What happened? Oh well, I'm not sure how how long are we like. It's <laughs> a big story. <laughs> yeah, but look, basically, I was in a. I had a business. Uh, I had some business partners who were builders. Yeah. And they ended up going into liquidation, and then the whole thing sort of came undone. And yeah. I overextended myself and made a lot of mistakes. And in fact, I share some of those mistakes in the book. Yep. Um, about you know, you know, not getting the some of the fundamentals around business right. Uh, and uh, it it changed my approach when I got into commercial cleaning. Mm. I guess for the second time, I was more doing residential the first time, although a little bit of um, uh, commercial. I had a couple offices when I first started. Yep. But when I got into the, this time, I really wanted to make sure I covered off all those mistakes that I made early to on in my a journey. Strong foundation. Yeah, exactly away. right. Yeah. So, how, so what was the what was the launch back into commercial cleaning like then? So, what, what was your what was the in, in your journey? When was that? Well, that was when I saw the writing on the wall. So I saw um, the property business didn't have a future for me. <laughs> uh, and it was like watching a slow moving train wreck. Like I knew it was going to happen. It was just a matter of when. Uh, and so I thought, well, you know, while this is, I, I know, you know, it's not going to go out the way that I want it to go, mm. go. So why don't I start something on the side and build it up? And that's how I got into commercial cleaning. And, and to begin with, it was just me in a vacuum at nighttime. So. Uh, you know, with a lot Google- of a lot of quietness and a lot of time to think, it was great. Yeah, I bet. it was actually really good. You had yeah. headphones on, and away you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was. Uh, yeah, to believe it or not, it was and very. That, and that's commercial cleaning, isn't it? It's after hours stuff. That's right. Yeah. And, th- and yeah. that's it's quite different to all yeah. the other stuff. Yeah, yeah. So you talk a bit in the book, and I know personally you talk a lot about relationships being the key to everything, and and you you refer to it. I know in conversations we've had about the misconceptions of digital and people focusing on all digital for channels and communication and you you take a different approach to business can you talk through that and it comes out in the book a bit too yeah so one one of the the i guess misconceptions particularly today about marketing is Mm. it's all got to be digital so you've got to um have great websites great landing pages uh uh good ads good content and None of those things are wrong, but they aren't always best for every business situation or business model. And so I wanted to look at uh, how we grew the business from the ground up. And instead of just making the assumption that the way the industry does it is the best way, we wanted to try different uh, experiments to see what worked best. Uh, Something, although obviously Google Ads and SEO is a big thing in commercial Mm. cleaning, uh, another thing is telemarketing. So telemarketing is very big in commercial cleaning. A lot of cleaning companies grow their businesses that way. Just targeting and, uh, businesses, calling them, cold calling yeah, them all. Yeah, that's right. So, uh, But the challenge with that, obviously, is it could be very expensive. So you're making a lot of phone calls to make a couple set appointments. And then once you set those appointments, then you've got a conversion rate on mm. those appointments. And so it comes and very costly. That? You did all oh, that? When we started, yeah, we did. We had like three full-time telemarketers in the office, you know, pounding the phones, pounding mm. people's ears. Uh, and uh, yeah, and we did get business, but it was expensive. It was ineffective. Mm. Um, and, uh, and one of the sort of breakthroughs happened when we realized, wait a moment, what we're offering is something free, which is a proposal. So we all we want to do is have an opportunity to put a proposal in someone's uh, inbox mm. about their cleaning. So, well, why don't we 
just why, do that, why, yeah. why don't we just do that? Why is that so hard? And so we change our approach from basically say, we'll skip the telemarketing approach. We'll just say hello to people and say, and, and tell them that things change and get them a proposal. Mm. And uh, how do you do that? How do we do that? Well, the truth is just door to door. So we just go door to door and um, we have a- A lot of people won't go there, will they? A lot of people won't do it. A lot of people don't do it the right way. And that's where most people uh, fall flat on their face Mm. when they're trying to grow their business is they hear that uh, cold calling, they hear that direct marketing works, uh, and then they buy a book and they've, not my book, but someone else's book maybe, um, that doesn't give them the right approach to uh, cold calling because, uh, you know, they- they start introducing themselves. They start talking about all the things that nobody is interested in learning. A bit mm. like when people are approaching they've got me. A, they've got an agenda, don't they? They walk. You know, they're walking in with an agenda. Yeah, that's right. Especially you come in with a big portfolio, you know, yeah. like a salesperson, and um, you can see those people a mile away and say, "Oh, the sales rep is here." And you know, that's what I did when I first tried it, and it was a dismal failure. You know, mm. we'll just. You know, I'd have to go and knock on 40 doors until someone said yes. And I thought, I'm not doing this. This is insane. This is crazy. So what was the penny drop? What changed? Making it a social experience. So people uh, don't want uh, distraction. Um, People don't want to be interrupted, but they're happy to be distracted. I mean, that's why employees are sitting, you know, let's be honest. They're probably scrolling through Facebook in their feed, you know, for Mm. half of their day because they want to be distracted. So if you can make the experience a distraction when you say hello, like a pleasant distraction, and they feel like, oh, it's work, you know, because yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm getting a proposal here, I'm getting some cleaning done, uh, then you're going to get a much more receptive uh, you know, experience. And, that, and that's how you train your franchise owners and master yeah. franchisees? Yeah. yeah. So we get very little pushback at the door. So almost uh, nearly 90% of people will say yes to a proposal from the interaction of the door. With the way you do it. That's right, yeah. That's your secret source. <laughs> I'm not sure. You yeah. share that in the book or the whole I thing? do actually share that yep. in the book. Um, and at first, I was very cautious I was gonna about say, did sharing you share this. It? Did you want to share it? Well, the reality is, is that most people don't want to do the work. That's true, yeah. And Especially so, this type of work, door to door. Yeah, yeah, or any type of work. Mm. And so I, before I wrote the book, I was very cautious about writing yep. you know, all my secrets, as it were. And then I thought, Wait a moment, I've got franchisees, and I'm just being honest now, who I teach them everything in the business, and they still sometimes, and they've actually paid me a lot of money mm. or you know, master franchisors to get into the business, and they don't always follow the system. Mm. So why am I worried? Mm. Uh, uh, I might as well just open my book and say, hey, this is how we get the majority of our business. It does require work. Yep. Uh, you can't get away from work. That's just... That's the reality so we, of life we, and right, we, operating a business. Yeah. We won't go into all the steps of it because you have yep. to get the book to do that. Yeah, that's um, right. I'll speak yep. to Damien directly about it. But um, let's talk about, I want to talk about, because I've learned, we've done a little bit of stuff. I did a presentation to your team a couple of weeks ago and everything on marketing and everything. And misconceptions that commercial cleaning is a small business. Can we talk a little bit about what happens in your business? Because you've had some pretty astronomical growth and some figures and everything. I spoke to a lot of to all of your master franchisors there, um, it was a really insightful conversation about what they're doing, how they're doing it, what they're earning and that type of stuff. Can you give some insights into it? Uh, yeah, so sometimes when people ask me uh, what I do, I say I've got a cleaning business. A little uh, cleaning business. Yeah. yeah. And uh, <laughs> they say, oh, you know, what, you know, is it good, uh, do you get a good hourly rate? Uh you know, what's it like, you know, after, you know, mopping people's floors at the end of the day. And I think, well, yeah, well, I've done that before. So mm. uh, it's not like I'm um, afraid of doing that type of work, but it's not really like that, especially in commercial cleaning. It doesn't take very long before you get a portfolio of clients and you start doing very well for yourself. And so, yes, we do have a number of you know, millionaires uh, that are our master franchises, and soon we've even got some unit franchises who are doing very well for themselves. So hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, a year, no problem in this business. So how do they do? It? They're not doing all the cleaning themselves, are they? What does it typically look like for a, a for a master and a unit franchise owner who owns a territory? Yeah. So commercial clean, like normally when you're looking at an, an office, uh, like a, a medium sized office. Today, it's 2024, you're looking 
for a small office, maybe $10,000 a year is what you spent. So you need 10, 10 clients cleaning. is a hundred thousand mm, you know, on cleaning, $10,000 on cleaning roughly. Yeah. 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 yeah a, a year. Uh, so, and then, and then there's some clients who are, you be $50,000 plus per month, you know, uh, their cleaning bill. So, uh, it, it doesn't take long before mm. people can have quite a sizable business. And the great thing about commercial cleaning, and it's the reason I fell in love with the industry, it's the original subscription business. So people just do it again and again and again. And, and, uh, and unlike a lot of businesses where every month you start at zero, and you've got to go and get the clients again, and then you hope next month is going to be better than the last month, or at least the same as last month. With commercial cleaning, because it's contractual, because it's not a discretionary spend, mm. uh, you do a good job, you'll keep those clients for as long as they're in business. And so you don't need to do any additional sales or marketing activity each month to grow your business. You just need to add one client onto another client and another client. Like if you just did one sale a month mm. uh then in 10 months you've got 10 clients you know average ten thousand dollars a year or so yeah 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 so it adds up very quickly and and that's a very slow way to grow yeah you can do much better than that yeah yeah it's a it's an interesting business how do you i imagine the whole bunch of people think that it's not very sexy all right there's a whole bunch yeah. of people out there who would go oh no way yeah. and would dismiss it immediately yeah how do you talk people through it who, I mean, obviously people aren't coming to you to inquire to you who, who, are, who are dismissing it, yeah. but yeah, in normal conversation with people, what do you say about that sort of stuff? Because I'm thinking people lean towards cafes and all that sort of stuff, which is a bit cool and a bit thing, you know, what, what do you say? Uh, well, it isn't sexy, but the industry itself isn't. Mm. And uh, there's a couple of guys in our industry who make a lot of fun of it. They even have toilet seats as part of their business cards. Like they just flaunt it. It's yeah, like, yeah. Hey, this is what it is. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it, it, it is lucrative. It's stable. It's mm. uh, as close to recession proof as you can think of. And you can think it's uh, got all the attributes that make up a great business. It, it does. Yeah. It does. And and the reality is, it's not really about cleaning. Obviously, cleaning is an important part of the business, but mm. it is a people business. So being good at, in this industry has been good with people. Mm. Uh, so what we find is prospective franchisees who are great uh, with customer service, who understand that it's about building relationships with their client base and with their team and developing their team of cleaners, they're the ones who really succeed mm. in our business. And I think we had a chat about it and something you talk about in the book that's a little bit different with commercial cleaning is how franchising fits into commercial cleaning. And it was a bit of an eye-opener for me when I went over the detail on it from your perspective on it. So how does it work so well from franchising with commercial cleaning? Why, why is it so different to, an, to other options, for example? So for a lot of other options, uh, you have to, and it's, it's show everything about the business. You're going to have to show them how to sell, how to market, how to do the operations, how to staff. Whereas in commercial cleaning, there's one side of the business that we can do for a prospective franchisee, and that is give them guaranteed cleaning contracts. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I, the way I fell into franchising, because I didn't initially go out to franchise the business, I, I fell into it, uh, is that I had a number of cleaning contracts that I put up for sale and I was looking at um, just the contracts just the contracts it yep. wasn't my business it was just the contracts uh, and the reason well it wasn't that they were bad contracts in fact they were very good contracts very profitable but uh, my team had to drive an hour to go out mm. there just uh, didn't fit it didn't make sense it's yeah. like well we're already making money here why don't I just offload these contracts but it makes more sense for us to concentrate uh, in an area and so I put these contracts up for sale and my phone got flooded. Like I was just basically, you know, it, I had to almost throw it's my because phone because it's a certainty of income, isn't it? That's right. Yeah. yeah. So people, and also the hourly rates much higher than what, what most other people in our industry get. So we, I made a point when I started to really, really identify what mattered most to our commercial cleaning clients and price wasn't on that list. Mm. So, so long as I had a number of other, was actually six things that we concentrate on providing for potential clients. So long as we meet each of those six things, they're happy to pay 20 or 30 or 50% more than their average cleaning Just to get price. the job done properly. That's right. They don't want to deal with the dramas. They just want to mm. 
uh, set and forget. They want to pay the cleaning bill and not worry about it. So if you can actually identify the needs that clients have uh, and provide guarantees around that, that, they're happy to pay extra. So I had those these cleaning contracts. They were very profitable. And uh, I was bombarded with all these sort of elementary questions about, well, how do I operate the business? How do I get set up? Set up? Mm. Uh, how do I go about getting more business? Can I get more business from you? Will you sell me more cleaning contracts? And then I started to realize, wait a moment, there is a demand here of people who genuinely want to operate their own commercial cleaning business, uh, but they don't have the support, they don't have the tools, and they don't have any ways of really growing the business. Uh, and it occurred to me that franchising would be a great way moving forward. And so what, w- what I found is if I guaranteed that I could win so many cleaning contracts, um, it'd be, uh, it was very compelling for mm, as a franchise franchisee because they've got certainty of income, mm. but they also could see the potential because it wasn't just the contracts that they bought. They could also see that they bought a business system mm. where they could double or triple that and also get access to more cleaning contracts that were one in the system. So uh, it ended up you know, suiting everybody in the business um, having this type of business model. And you master franchise, don't you? So you've got right. a master franchise model. Can you briefly explain how that structure for you? Yeah. So, well, we operated it directly ourselves. So we had unit franchises in, in Queensland. Individual locations. In, uh, in, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, and then it occurred to us, wait a moment, uh, this is working very well for ourselves. Uh, other people may want to be able to you basically use this same model of winning commercial cleaning contracts in a local area recruiting franchises with those lead cleaning contracts and growing a territory. And so we decided that we would give master franchising a go and, and it's turned out very well. I mean, certainly made mistakes along the road, but yeah. um, our guys are very successful, doing very well. Right? Yeah, so they ha- they look after a whole territory. So, for That's example, right. we spoke to Merrin yesterday. Yeah. We interviewed him on yeah. the podcast and he looks at the whole of Victoria with his That's brother right. Cameron. Yeah. Um, and they're absolutely firing. He loves it. Absolutely yeah. loves it. So that's it, mate. That's um, that's clean up with franchising. That's Excellent. Thank you franchising. so much for telling us a bit of your story, your book, and everything about it. Um, that's the Urban Clean Business, Damien. Thanks so much for joining us, mate. It's a pleasure. Thanks, Thanks, Clint. Thanks for having me on. And that's it for another one on the Franchise Everything podcast. Hope you enjoyed that. Something a bit different. Take a look at it. Commercial planning. I've learned quite a bit about it in the last couple of weeks from Damien and his crew. Um, hope you enjoyed this. Um, please, if you like this, please share, subscribe, do all that sort of stuff. Make sure we get this information out there to once again help people be happier and more profitable in their business and lives. Catch you soon.